Grey Gardens is part of um, a Scottish-wide festival of architecture for the year 2016, um, this year being the International Year of Innovation, Architecture and Design. Um, Dundee is a city evolving with its architecture and town planning at this moment in time. Um, DCA was a, a part of the um, an initial phase of the cultural redevelopment, cultural renaissance of the city. Grey Gardens is the title of a movie um, from the 1970s, but it, it was the ev evocative nature of those two words together for this exhibition, an exhibition exploring concrete forms in, um, in built environments, in natural landscapes. We have scale models of important um, pieces of architecture that were um, produced in Scotland from the mid-1950s through to the, um, the mid-1970s. I was really interested that David Harding, the, the new town artist of Glenrothes, would go on to establish the environmental art course at Glasgow School of Art. And that's a, cor uh, a course that Martin Boyce and Neville Ray both graduated from. So there is this um, sense of timelines, connections um, that, that runs through the exhibition. Um, DCA is um, a, a building by Richard Murphy. It's important to acknowledge that Richard Murphy was influenced by Carlos Garpa um, in, in a similar way to um, how Martin Boyce um, found influence in Scarpa when he was developing an exhibition curated by DCA for the Venice Biennale and the culmination of, of DCA's 10th anniversary. And the sublime Italian photographer um, Guido Guidi, we have um, over 20 of his photographs of the Tomb of Brion. So um, situating them in this, this Murphy building for this festival of architecture kind of felt, um, felt right. I went to Glenrothes in 1968. Uh, there was an advert in the Scotsman for an artist to work with the Development Corporation architects and planners and engineers to, and this is a quote, to contribute to the external built environment of the town. And the work ranges from sculptural objects to later on more kind of conceptual works. Only one of which was made for the town centre in Glenrothes because all the other works were made for the neighbourhoods where people lived, so all over the town. And they range uh, to, from abstractions to kind of literal decorative works. I also uh, got involved with the engineers on the wing walls of underpasses and then because they were responsible for all the paving in the town uh, I worked with them to bring uh, contemporary Scottish poetry. I took a verse or a poem from short poems from Douglas Young, Goodson Smith, McDermott and cast paving slabs with the, these poems on them. And I put them at telephone kiosks and uh, bus stops, places where people waited, you know, um, and it looked down, they would have a poem to read. And then latterly, um, because Alan Bold, had, the poet, had come to live and work in Glenrothes as part of a scheme that we had set up, Alan and I collaborated together on uh, a number of poems, uh, particularly which you see in the exhibition, The Path Poem. I came across this desire line, which is where people walk across the grass instead of walking at right angles, and I used to pave these. And so with this particular one, there were 90 slabs it was going to take to get from one end to the other. So I said to Alan, could you write a poem, half of which will be read one word per slab on the way to the shops, and the other half would be read on the way back from the shops. So the path poem um, is the major work that I did with Alan Bold. 
We're in the show with a, a video piece and some related prints um, uh, and a model which have come out of our response to a building in Ayrshire called Port Murray. Um, and the building is by Peter Wormsley and is currently under threat of demolition. Why we're interested in the building, we've known about the building for a long <coughs> time, perhaps about 20, 25 years. Um, and we've, we've went to visit it now and again when we're down in Ayrshire, in that part of the world. And then recently we discovered, yeah, just towards the end of the year, last year, that it was going to be demolished. Um, we made some inquiries. Is there any way it could be um, saved or kept mm. in kind of situ? Um, and it seems that's impossible. So um, we kind of we contacted the owner and we've come up with a, um, the proposal that it be moved, deconstructed, and moved to another location. Um, and so that's what this the video is part of this response showing. It's because the location, its situation is very, very, it's part of the building's kind of integrity itself, part of the, the building was made for that site and moving it sort of compromises that. So part of the filming it is to show that its relationship to the, to its situation. Um, but but it was, the process is that we are still trying to kind of find a way to deconstruct it bit by bit, dismantle it and move it to another uh, location. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a kind of absurdity in trying to move a building from one place to another, but this, um, the, the building is significant and the architect is significant. His other buildings across the country are listed and it, it just seems um, shocking that it's been able to kind of come to this, that it's about to possibly be destroyed. And although obviously we can't save the house in the way, you know, in on that site, which mm. would be the ideal scenario, mm. um, then it's well, you know, as a response, how can we do something with that space that um, kind of, yeah, makes it into something new, makes it into something else. So, yeah, Wormsley Worm himself said that um, when his, his building had been criticised for being more like, he was more concerned with sculpture, it was more like sculpture than an actual, um, than architecture. And he said, well, why can't a building be both, kind of not be both architecture and kind of sculpture? And when we saw the building, we got access to the inside of it mm. with no belongings there, with this kind of empty space. The kind of sculptural qualities of it are incredible. The sculptural spatial qualities are kind of incredible. The way it's, it's a very simple building. Um, Rect interconnecting kind of set of rectangles, but it's also very complex the way they they connect. And it, every time you go, the kind of relationship not only the situation but these interconnecting kind of spaces within the building are kind of remarkable. So, um, so we are thinking of we we're seeing it very much as as sculpture. Well, the 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 whole show is um, about Scottish artists that have worked, that are working um, with architecture and concrete in different ways. And the particular part that I'm showing in the show is about a garden in Mexico that is by Edward James. And he was very interested in plants and he built this very impressive garden that originally was going to be an orchid garden that turned into a concrete orchid garden, if you will. And I am showing photographs of this garden. So originally, he um, planted, like, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure how many. We'd have to ask the gardener, but I think it was something like 10,000 orchids, and there was a freak frost. And so all the orchids died. And this place, which is San Luis Potosí, um, he decided that the only way to keep his orchids from falling apart was to work with Plutarco, who does the casts, and um, together they worked and they built the concrete garden. The place where the garden is, is in the middle of the jungle, and it's really, really lush. It's very surreal. It's, he has, in the time that he was setting up the garden, he has worked also with surreal artists, and so there's, I wouldn't go so far as to say that there's influences from the other artists, but maybe there's influence, influences through contact. So when you're, when you're in the garden, 
you really get a feeling of exploration, fantasy, surrealism, things um, out of out of the realm of of possibilities. So you, it's almost like you've been put inside an Escher drawing and you've been let loose or somehow you entered into Alice in Wonderland's back door or something and you're just let loose in this wonderful jungle of concrete structures and plants. <laughs>